it all comes down to this. It's Barcelona. It's a place potentially in the UEFA Champions League semi-finals. What what could possibly go wrong? And welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons. Of course, if you've been enjoying the series up at this point, drop a like. That would be phenomenal-tastic. That's not a word. Today, I thought we'd start the page of Komi Eklu, a man who's really come into his own this season and has actually just become one of my favourite players in this team. And I sort of signed him um, for... I mean, I signed him for many reasons that he's a decent player and we were able to get him pretty damn cheap at the time. But I think he's just become genuinely an excellent player in this team. Really not sure if he had this familiarity in these positions before or not. But he's weirdly getting all these fullback-like tendencies. Komi, calm down. We've also now had more episodes of this save than we did with Bolton, which is actually kind of mad because it just feels like we've... I don't know. It feels like we've just begun. I think it's probably because we've not actually been at Sassuolo that long in the grand scheme of things. Now, we've had a couple of games off camera, of course, but uh, also we've had a youth intake. You should be seeing it on your screen now. Just, just awful. That is probably the worst youth intake I've had in a while. Now, obviously, our squad is excellent, so that's definitely a factor. But I think even for that, with the facilities and everything we've got here, we have that is a bad, bad year for Sassuolo. I'll show you the best, best two. So there was uh, Xavi Rescalvo, a Spanish centre-back who is, you know, he's, he's six foot tall, has some okay jumping reaches, aggression and bravery are fine. He's just a bit eh, really. And the other player, we literally, we only signed three players up out of the youth intake. The other one is Gianluca Chiossi, who is, hey, look, another centre-back, although he's sort of a bit of everything. Jack of all trades, master of none. Although, again, he's more of a centre-back, good jumping reach, aggression, bravery. Decent enough tackling and positioning, actually. The six foot three, he, he's probably the one I prefer of the two, but like, really, the ceilings are just non existent on these guys. I mean, actually, that's not true at all. The ceilings are very existent, very low, like a, a 17th century cottage in the Cotswolds. I'm just buzzing, honestly, even though it's been such a long time since the Southampton game in my head, because obviously it's Monday now and I recorded that on Friday, but bugger me. What a moment for Yanderson. I like. It was a it was a move that I wasn't really expecting to pay off, was taking off time and overmars and bringing on Yanderson. But the guy has proven to me now that he is a very capable deputy, can step in when we need to, particularly as a super sub, and I really, really like him. And I think he's got a bright future at Sassuolo. Just to be able to pick up time and overmars is slack sometimes, because he can't do it all by himself. Right, we had a couple of games off camera, so we're going to show you those games, games, games now, and then we're going to get into Barcelona. It's not going to be easy, is it? First up, we were at home against Brescia. Some lovely work here. Eventually, the ball ends up with Komi Eklu, who just decides to ping one, and the goalkeeper does nothing about it. One nil Sassuolo, and another goal for the season for Komi Eklu. One of the reasons I was showing him at the start of the video. But then, 65th minute, good header here, and it was 1-1. And I was a bit concerned, but Juventus were dropping points elsewhere, so I felt okay about it. And then, in the 77th minute, just lovely. Look at this little ball from Eklu. Slots it into the channel for Rivas. Pings it home, 2-1 to Swallow. I swear Rivas got himself his first goal in that game against Crotone. Well, now he has himself another. And honestly, his record this season, when you actually look at him in terms of his, like, everything per minute for him, he's been fantastic, both creatively and even, well, in front of goal now, I suppose. But yeah, a good win for us. Definitely deserved it on the night. But Eklu, once again, brilliant. But it was then away to Cagliari. We conceded a pretty stonewall penalty in the first half to make it 1-0 Cagliari on 38 minutes. Then I took off time at Overmars and brought on Yanderson because I was like, you know what? He's not performing well again. Rivas puts a great ball through. Look at this for a finish. Little scoop finish over. Bails us out here. Gets us to back into the game at one all. So happy to bring Yanderson on the bench again. But then Eklu flying down this right-hand side finds Pierangelo Lanza. 84th minute on the clock. Gorgeous little ball across. Yanderson, <laughs> he's done it again. Once again, the late hero. Two goals for him off the bench in this game as well. But then there was a little bit more in the tail as well. 85th minute now. We really were stepping up. Di Giacomo pops it through. And who could be on the end of it? But Granados. 3-1 to Swallow. It really did sort of take us a little while to get going. They didn't offer much outside of the penalty. But wow. Bringing on Yanderson again for yet another brace. All three of the players that I brought off the bench in this game contributed something. I brought on uh, Granados, Rivas, and Yanderson. Yanderson scored a brace, Rivas got an assist, and then uh, Granados got the other goal. So substitute the bench depth is useful. But more importantly, <laughs> Juventus lost to Crotone with Kovic scoring a brace. And that makes things much, much sweeter for us at the top of the league. We are virtually a shoe in for the title now. Uh, it has to be said. Juventus dropped points against, oh god, who was it? I think it was Udinese during our game against Brescia, where I thought we were about to drop points, but we didn't. And then we went out in the end and comfortably swept aside Cagliari as Juventus lost 2-1 away at Crotone. So, yeah, they really have bottled it massively, throwing us now a 10-point advantage with seven games to go. We are in a prime position right now and have now scored 99 goals in the league this season with seven matches to spare. 
we could potentially go for a Serie A record goal scoring season if we get the right results in some of these games off camera that we'll have coming up soon. I genuinely think 110 wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility. For us to score 11 goals in our next seven, we average like two a game. It could be done. Speaking of times ahead, it's Barcelona. Now, I understand the potential desire for us to have a more conservative development sort of tactic that we can revert to. And I definitely think that I still want to go with our main style to get to Barcelona today. If it looks like that's definitely something we should do in the future, then I will try to build something up for that for next season. But the main reason I don't want to start doing that at the moment is because I like to do considerable tactics tests when I try to build tactics to make sure that we're actually getting something that works rather than wasting our time on something that might not do when we could have just won with our normal style of play. And the downside about building that type of shape is there's very few games in which you can test it in because most of the time you don't need it. And that sort of becomes the problem. So it's a tough one. But today we're going to go well, all guns blazing. I want to try to get ourselves some away goals. And I trust the team to do it. Because I think if we can get past Barcelona, we have a really good shot at a final. Now, slight downside though, in that Believ has picked up an injury and will miss, uh, I think, this game and the Kievo game. He should be back for the second leg. Now, obviously this is not happening uh, by any means. Eklu will play in the midfield. I would usually go for Milivojev in there, but he's needed in defense at the moment. And I just really like Komi Eklu in the moment. And I think he could definitely do a job for us. Now, is Lance... Oh no, there he is. My assistant really doesn't like him. He just doesn't credit the 26 goals this season. Uh, De Giacomo's back in, as is Mihil Chea, Gregory Cassells, Overmars. That's fine. I'm going to put Rivas on the bench, and I'm also going to bring Siggy Johnson instead of Candido, because I'd rather bring Rivas on on that left-hand side. Technically as well, if I needed him to, he can play through the middle, uh, which will give us a bit of cover. Not that we'd really need it. I'm thinking of maybe looking for a right back in the summer, uh, particularly if we could move Mihil Chea on for huge money, because I really do feel like that's a possibility. I think he might just be peaking out a little. I like to try and move players on when they sort of hit that peak. That way we get maximum money and profit from them, but also we can then invest that money wisely into someone who's probably going to cost less, but could end up being better. Hopefully the visuals and everything for the game capture are actually all working this morning. When I, when I came in, it was, I was just getting blank screens all the time. I had to restart FM a couple of times before OBS would even actually pick it up, which is a bit concerning. Um, so hopefully you can see this. A bit, bit pointless if it was just my face cam. I'll describe it to you. It's also worth noting, we have never failed to reach the quarterfinals of the Champions League since we managed to qualify for it. And that for me is a hell of an achievement because really my plan in those first couple of seasons when we got into Europe was just do something, try. And we massively overachieved in those first two seasons, I think. So we're here. It's the Camp Nou. My plan here is that I hope that we've got enough firepower in this team to score a couple of goals. Uh, the, if the likes of Gregory and Dan Komi Eklu is a big game player. Now, I don't really understand what the game considers to be a big game. Would a Champions League quarterfinal count as a big game? For me, it should, but you just never know. Does it only mean cup finals, league deciders? I don't know. Well, I guess we're going to find out. But Eklu is the type of man that could step up on the occasion as he whips one in and it's cleared away. Cassells with a free kick here. He's going to go for goal. Oh, nice effort. Still no movement yet on the loan for him. It keeps telling me that it's still too soon. Hopefully that isn't going to screw us in the long, in the grand scheme of things and we will be able to get him back for next season because at the moment we really can't afford to uh, sign him as Lancer. He's got time. Oh, Lancer, please. Oh, no. How? How did he not fit? Oh my god. But it's moments like that that you have to take your chances. And it worries me that we didn't just then. But it's a good start that we were even creating those sort of opportunities. And uh oh, god almighty. Perez, right, this is going to have to be some huge work from Milivojev. He's not going to get there, is he? What a save from Fran Speecher. We look decent so far. It's been a pretty even game. Uh, both sides just kind of going at it currently. Cassells, Lancer, round the side for Komi Eklo. Great save. Again, yeah, he's offside, but we're asking a lot of the young Polish central defender. Oh, he did actually get his first goal for Poland, though, uh, in the little off-camera period. So that was quite cool for him. Troy Gregory flying into tackles. That's better, Troy. Yes, lad. Please don't shoot. You've got options in the box. That's better. Use the Giacomo. Tons of bodies. One of them is Nieva Domski. Oh, oh, the patient builder. Oh, Komi Eklu again and cleared. Mazzolini. Uh, what are they doing? Why are they... Was Nieva Domski... Who is actually supposed to be marking who here? Brunswick. Good save from Speecher. The one thing we've got over them at the moment is possession. Mazzolini. Sp <laughs> oh, he's just taking the piss now. It's very even, though. Speecher just tries to hope one through the middle there, although there could be a nice pass on. Here we go. Overmars! Yes! Time and Overmars. Barcelona nil. Sassuolo won. And it's his 37th goal of the season. And that was magical. And I think the reason that works so well is because they allowed Overmars, I think, to win this header. Speecher picks him out brilliantly here, but I think by allowing Overmars to knock this ball down to Cassells. I mean, it's a lovely ball around the side from Troy Gregory, and Overmars still has a lot of work to do there, but that's all come from Barcelona standing off of him, allowing him to lay that back, and there's our away goal. 
I mean, I've got to say, I think this has been a very tight game. I think we've probably just... If, if a team of the two deserve to be in front, it probably is us, but marginally. We've had more possession, better quality of chance so far, other than the Mazzolini one uh, in that first half, really. Uh, but great performance so far. I might be tempted to shut this game down a bit sooner than normal. But we'll see. Eklu's ball in and... Oh! 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 The shot was blocked from Nevadomsky. I've started making a few switches to just slow this game down and start killing it now. Uh, because if we were to get out of this with a 1-0 win away from home, that would be massive. Just enormous. Mazzolini. I mean, a one all draw isn't the end of the world either, but if we were to win, that would be something next level, honestly. Nevadomsky's got to be so careful here. Milivojev, nice. Nevadomsky's got Rivas. And Rivas has got passing ability. That's one thing he has over the others in that role. Over Mars! Oh... A minute and a half to go at the Camp Nou, and we could potentially be about to beat Barcelona away from home. But no jinxing this anytime soon. We've got a well-played Siggy. That's brilliant. That takes so much pressure off the guys. That could honestly be the tackle that could, in fact, win us this game. Stefka sells now with space. Oh, if he picks the pass out, it could have been two. But now we can kill time and kill this corner. Take us as long as he wants. What a ball. Very nearly a great pass. Because Sells will pick this up, and if we can just hold on to, the hold on to possession for the next 30 seconds, then we'll be fine. Bruno, nice. Patience, love to see it. Jan, oh, dangerous play. Still got 20 seconds left. Clipped into the channel, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know. I feel like sometimes no matter what you do. <laughs> I just wish there was a, an instruction that is just hold possession. Like, not time waste. Hold, purely hold possession. I.e., pass that back to the goalkeeper. Do anything to just hold possession for a few fractions of a second more. And there's just no way of doing that. That's frustrating. I mean, I don't know. It, it's frustrating because we've actually played very well. And I think we've been the better side. If anything, we've got better in the second half of this game. And for us to draw it instead of win is is annoying. Um, but it's a good sign that we were able to do as well as this away from home at Barcelona. But what I mean is in these positions, just pass it to the goalkeeper. That's all I want in those positions. Just to hold on to possession a little bit more. There used to be an actual instruction called retain possession. Um, now, whether that actually did that, I don't know. Oh, Jesus Christ. But that's what I would like to see. Something like that. So you can just tell them to just hold on to the ball. But we don't have that. And instead, we have a one-all draw away at Barcelona. Now, honestly, if you'd have given me a one-all draw at Barcelona and the, before the game had started, I would have bitten your hand off. So I suppose we've got that. But Christ, we return in a moment. Right then, we're back. We had Hellas Verona in the middle of this on the Saturday. Uh, within a minute of the start of the game, Rivas takes the ball around his man and hammers it home. I'm starting to like him more and more and more in this position. It genuinely is ridiculous. And then, before two minutes of the match had even elapsed, we found ourselves in a 2-0 advantage. This time, Rivas picking it up, slide rule pass for over Mars, pops it in, and it was 2-0 to Sassuolo. Goal and an assist for Rivas inside two minutes. Things you like to see. Then 13 minutes on the clock. Well, would you believe it? Um, this time, it was Diacoma with the ball over the top. Over Mars on the end of it. Great first touch. 3-0 on 13 minutes two goals for over mars good stuff and it just kept going 33 minutes once again the ball then finds itself to rivas he picks that same pass through the middle over mars is on the end of it hat trick in 33 minutes and it was four nil to sassuolo crazy crazy times it didn't get any better for them after that though 44 minutes on the clock lancer going out to the wide right here eventually the ball is put across by granados on the end of it was over mars to score his fourth goal of the game for five nil before half time and then in the 89th minute some nice work on the edge of the box here rivas again linking up brilliantly Uriel so he knocks it around the side and there was Yanderson on the end of it for 6-0 just perfect performance uh four goals for over Mars uh I think two assists and a goal for Augusto Rivas as well just very quickly we remain 10 points clear but we've now scored 105 goals we're not going to get the record because apparently the record is I believe Torino with like 125 uh in like the 40s didn't realize it was quite as much as that so that seems a little unlikely for us to get but I think 115 wouldn't be off the cards really with six games to go uh but as you can see as well over Mars now hits the big 30 30 goals in the league this season I said that he might be able to get to 35 and I think it's genuinely on the cards the most ever in Serie A was Gonzalo Higuain for Napoli with 36 goals I think there's a there's an outside chance that over Mars could potentially get that which is ridiculous as well it'd be nice for Lancer to add one more to get to the big 20 in there too uh Cassell's and that's obviously on there as well. Did Jack, but just everybody. I imagine the average rating chart is just all of our players. <laughs> But it's really good signs. And Rivas now has 11 assists this season, despite only starting three matches. Three goals and 11 assists this season from three starts. I think there's going to come a time next season where he needs to start starting more games. And I think I need to put more trust in him because he's brilliant at picking out that brilliant ball in behind for Overmars. There's a, I'm genuinely wondering if I could start him today against Barca and see if we can play that pass. That's my idea. It might be a risk, but we are going to need something like that goal-wise today. 
uh, to be honest. And I, I mean, what's Gregory? Gregory's form has kind of gone off the boil lately a little bit. And Rivas is in scintillating form at the moment. And I do kind of wonder if we should just try it. Uh, but I do still want, obviously, Eklu in the midfield. I might actually go with Dinko Pavlish for today, uh, just to anchor us a bit more potentially, because Niewodomski has better games than Dinko Pavlish, but he also has much worse. He's a bit more inconsistent. Although lately, he's been all right. Maybe I'm being too harsh on him. I think, you know, you know what? No, I, I should probably, I put a bit of trust in him, I think. And so we'll play wide right. Mihilcher and Di Giacomo come in. That's fine. I'm going to start Rivas. Gregory is going to be benched for today's game. I, I really do like Troy Gregory. It's hard to deny that he's got 15 goals this season. But what I think we want out of today's game is a player that can pick out those passes to Overmars. And I've seen Rivas do it a few times now. And I think he's in the form that maybe, just maybe, given a tiny bit of time on the ball, which admittedly he won't get much of against Barca, but he's got the quality that he can find those passes that could potentially cut Barcelona open and might just be the difference today. I don't know. I think it's worth a try. Cassells as well. The form. My goodness. But he's also Steph Cassells. We know what he can do. I think I'll have Siggy on the bench instead of Candido as well, since Troy Gregory's there. And that'll give us a nice little, uh, nice little display of players for the bench. It all comes down to this. It's Barcelona. It's a place potentially in the UEFA Champions League semi-finals. What, what could possibly go wrong? Now, to be fair, we are technically still in a pretty advantageous position in that if this game was to end up being a boring nil-nil, which they don't really uh, very often, then there's still a chance. Also, in other news, this is brilliant. Um, Chelsea offered to buy a clause out of Milosevic's contract. We had a 20% of um, profit clause. There's no way they're going to sell him for profit. So they've just given us another £4 million, taking the grand total of that deal so far to £27 million. And I looked in the contract a little bit more. They still have to pay us another £1.6 million in instalments. Chelsea could end up giving us £30 million for a goalkeeper that we didn't want and they're not using. I mean... If that isn't stonks, I don't know what is. Right then, 90 minutes away from a Champions League semi-final. We've thrown Rivas into the deep end here, but I just wonder if just a tiny little bit of space on the ball for him. Barcelona will be pressing up. If he can just find those balls in behind for time and over Mars today, I'm going to rely on him to see if he can do that. And if he just does a couple, I'll be very happy. I just want to see him get on the ball, see what he can do. He's one of those players that every time he seems to get on the ball out on that wide uh, left situation, he just looks up to see where that striker is because he does have, I think he's got 16 passing and 18 vision, which for a left-sided player, is very, very strong. Please don't foul him. Just stay on your feet. Good block. Eklu will clear... Okay, that is a dreadful clearance, but luckily Brunswick's let that go out of play. And don't allow... Oh, that's a great piece of play from Mazzolini. Whoa! Bath just whips that wide. I know it wasn't that long ago that we played Barca, but it was still two or three years, and their team doesn't seem to have really changed a lot. I recognise almost every player in this team. Good save from Speecher, but yeah, really strong start from Barca. It really is a Barcelona onslaught right now, and we could just weather the storm for a bit. Never mind. Uh, we have conceded through... What a great name. Tashike Konate makes it 1-0 Barca. I mean, we've done nothing in the opening 15 minutes of this match. Uh, we just haven't had a, a chance to get going yet. It's just been all Barcelona pressure. And that's fine. But then... Why? He's just completely unmarked. Oh, well. We go again. That's the away goal situation. So we now we do have to score in this game. And I'm really hoping that that randomness towards the very last minutes of the last game isn't going to be what cost us but really it won't be what cost us what cost us will be what happens in this game what it comes down to if you can't perform on the home game which is usually where we actually do our best work to be fair go on thrashing in there Niewodomski Overmars round the side for Rivas round the side for Overmars and he puts it in the back of the net and Rivas has already repaid me we're getting the assist and it's a Swolo one Barca one 42 goals for the season for time and Overmars now admittedly a lot of that comes down to Oriol's absolutely shocking throw here Niewodomski brilliantly out jumps Perez but look at this Overmars finds Rivas to put it back on a plate for him that is outrageous vision not even vision but like composure from Rivas the Giacomo will take this. Rivas will pick this up, whips it through, and Lancers on the end of it. And now Augusto Rivas has a brace of assists in the opening 30 minutes of this match. <laughs> okay. Um, this guy is starting to look better and better as things. What a ball. Goalkeeper's definitely all over the place there, but Lancer at the back post, and we've turned it around on Barca out of nowhere. Come on! And he has definitely justified his existence in this game. Uh, after what I saw from him in the last game, it just felt like the right thing to do for us. And I think it's paid off currently. But the rest of the team still have jobs to do here. But Rivas has done his job so far, providing two assists already in this game. He's just an absolute, like, vision machine. He's basically a pair of glasses. He's a human pair of glasses. Ball whipped in. Eklu clears it. And again, back to Barca. The uh, player sort of uh, reminded me of the pattern at the very start of the first half here. So we'll no doubt concede a corner in a minute. Hernandez. Perez, I'm hoping for a long shot. That's a really nice piece of play. Good defending. And Obermars, no. 
I mean, as it goes, I think we've actually probably still ended up being the better side. It just took a little while for us to get going. We didn't really wake up until Barca took the lead through Canate. Barcelona do look like they're coming back into the game a little bit. Never mind. Never bloody mind. Great ball in from Steph Cassells and Pierre Angelo Lanzo makes it 3-1 to Sassuolo now. 28 goals this season for Pierre Angelo Lanzo and he's now grabbed two in the Champions League. What a ball that is. That is from Steph Cassells. That is almost identical to the goal we conceded, I think, against Southampton, wasn't it? In the Champions League last season. No, it was this season, wasn't it? Picked up by Di Giacomo. Rivas now. Oh, there's the ball. There's the ball. That's the one I was looking for. That little one in behind the into the half space. He's so good at picking those out. Di Giacomo into great space yet again. Inside for Rivas now. He's into the box and he's bundling his way through defenders and he might still be able to catch it here. Eklu, Cassells, slips it through for Lanza, and it's four. It's 4-1 four, to Sassuolo. I have no idea what's going on. A hat-trick for Pierangelo Lanza against Barcelona in the Champions League, and we have a 4-1 lead on aggregate. Rivas does so well to bustle through defenders and force this pressure, but what a run. The pick out from Steph Cassells there is perfect, and Lanza has just shuffled that. It's 4-1. Come on. This still isn't done yet, but it's certainly looking that way. Don't rest on our laurels at all. Perez bringing it forward because Barcelona have offered nothing really much to this game but they have now offered a goal back Norberto Fuertes gets one back for Barcelona they've got their second away goal but they're still going to need two more I think we just shut it down now don't even risk it kill off the last 15 minutes of this match despite the two goal advantage because we just cannot risk a four all draw or some nonsense like that uh, they just get a bit confused there I think the subs haven't helped four minutes of stoppage time two minutes one minute and we are through my friends so swallow five barcelona three in the end little tiny scare but i think we did the right thing by just shutting the game down after that and not risking you know any potential nonsense late on very nearly um actually got ourselves a fifth goal in the guy and i think we were the deserved winner on the night lancer's hat trick over mars with the goal as well but really augusto rivas was the one that set us going on that with those two assists early in the game and i think playing him on that left side was thoroughly justified as we now do go to another champions league semi-final where we'll play i actually don't know who will play i wasn't really paying attention if i'm honest it is in fact it's not even close it's a very comfortable 4-0 victory for atletico who of course lost last year's final to southampton so it's a bit of a weird one really because both of us dislike them and there's also a Coppa Italia final so it's gonna be tough for me to oh god that... i swear this was much later last season it feels like it's been moved up because I remember us getting knocked out last season and then playing the Coppa Italia final. So the fact that it's even before the Champions League semi is a bit odd, but I guess there you go. So obviously we'll be coming back for the. That's, that's a shame, actually, but we don't really think we can skip a game against Atletico and I don't really want to bundle it into two episodes because I think that's a bit too stretched, honestly. That's a shame. I wonder why it was moved so far up. Anyway... That's coming up next episode. Atletico Madrid, Champions League semi-final, our second one in as many years. Can we go one step further? I'm still not sure. Um, but then again, we beat Southampton and they won it last year. And they beat Atletico in that final. So I guess that kind of bodes well. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this and I hope you have. Wow, that was that's what a weird couple of games. Uh, then yeah, drop a like. That's awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. So we'll follow there too. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for Champions League semi for the second season in a row. Can we go one step further this time? And that would be the ultimate step in many ways for us. So I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold you gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.